What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So in this video, what I'm going to do is talk more in depth about the Prate exam, what resources, study strategies, etc., to help you to score in the 99th percentile. Now I'm a little uncomfortable even saying that and doing this clickbaity type of presentation because every time I see one of these things like how to score 270 on USMLE, you know, something along those lines, I cringe a little bit inside because I feel like it's so individualized. There is no one set strategy. There is no perfect study routine. There is no perfect resource, right? Another thing that people get themselves confused about is this idea that somehow there's this magical resource that's going to cover every single thing you need to know on USMLE or Prite exam or board exam. And in my experience, there's not a single resource that does all of those things. However, with that said, I will show you the things that I think were helpful. And as a disclaimer real quick, I do not get paid by any of these companies to endorse their products. This is my personal experience and after careful review of the resources that are available for a psychiatrist for their in-service exam as well as board preparation. These are the things that I've come up with that I think are essential to your study. and your So you might notice in the background here, I'm sitting next to a stack of very large books and no discussion about board prep or Prite study would be complete without discussing textbooks, right? The thing that nobody reads, the thing that most people in medical school never cracked open, right? Because it was too much information, too time consuming, and very, very difficult to fit into your study strategy. The nice thing about when you become a resident compared to when you're a medical student is that you have more time to understand the subject as a whole, right? You can kind of think of your medical school exams as like, I gotta you know, drink as much water from the fire hose as I can, get as much information crammed into my brain so that I can do well on my exam. However, when you get to residency, you are now studying one particular subject right? You're studying psychiatry. Your goal is to be a great psychiatrist. And what makes this nice now is you have a four-year period or three-year period, if you're fast-tracking a child, to go through this information and understand everything that you need to understand. So reading a textbook shouldn't be that difficult of a task. Now, let's talk about the ones that I personally like. So many people have found this one helpful to begin with, and this is Kaplan and Sadox, this is kind of like your classic test text. Notice this is not the giant one, this is the clinical psychiatry. So this kind of, what they, what they do, and this is clever marketing, I guess, is they take a lot of their different books, their different versions of this book, and they kind of drop it down by tier. So they make it smaller and smaller um, in terms of the amount of information they put in there. So what I like about this one is that it comes in an ebook format that you can activate so you don't have to carry this big textbook around. I personally like to just let it sit on my bookshelves over there and look cool in the background. Um, and I'll use the ebook version when I'm on the go or when I'm in, you know, when I'm working if I want to look something up or reference it. So this is a pretty good one and actually is one that you should probably read cover to cover if you choose to go this route. And I'll give you another potential route you could go for textbook reading if you prefer a different style and a different textbook. So this thing in total I think is somewhere around a thousand pages give or take. And um, it's definitely doable. Again, a thousand pages during the course of your four years, you know, a chapter a week or something like that. You know, you could definitely get there if you're willing to, to push through it. So definitely recommend this book as one of your primary resources for your studies. The next book I want to talk about is The Mass General. And I really personally like this because what I like about the Mass General textbook is it's not as wordy as Kaplan and Sadek and it really helps in terms of clarifying some of those concepts and it has way more charts and graphs and visual things for the visual learner. So Kaplan and Sadek has mostly just black and white text. It's pretty much all text. 
there's some charts and such and tables in there, but not as much as this book has. And this one's like a little bit thicker, so this is more maybe comparable to the synopsis, the Kaplan Sadek synopsis of psychiatry, which is a much bigger textbook. So this one is bigger, it's more dense, it's but it's a definitely, in my opinion, a much easier read and certainly could serve as an alternative for your Kaplan Sadek book if you choose to go this route. Uh, again, same type of thing. It comes with expert consult. It allows you to do all the same things with the textbook either phys that you could do physically. So instead of carrying around this giant textbook, you can have it hang out on your bookshelf, look cool, and um, you know use the ebook versions of it on your iPad, phone, whatever you choose. The last book I'll talk about is another important one, and it's one you should read during those two months of neurology, and that's Kaufman's Clinical Neurology for Psychiatrists. So this is actually a really good textbook as well. And what makes this textbook really valuable is the questions that come after every chapter. So a lot of people tell me that they feel like this particular textbook is too basic. It's a little too easy to, uh, to read and maybe not covering neurology on a deeper level the way say a neurology resident would need to know it. But that's fine, again, you're a psychiatrist you're not exactly treating all of the different and various types of neurological disorders. And this book covers the bread and butter topics that you're gonna need to, to know. And again, we're talking here about how to do good on a board exam or Pride exam. We're not necessarily talking about how to be a great neurologist. So again, this book, a little basic in terms of the information presented, but really um, is worth its weight in gold in terms of the move on to my favorite question banks and other essential items to help you do well on your Prate exam. So again, I don't get any type of compensation for these things. These are, you know, my recommendations based on, you know, study and based on, you know, personal use with these things and success on the Prate exam. So with that said, let's discuss the first one. So the first one is the board vitals. Um, this is actually provided to me by my residency um, as part of the residency. So this is the Q bank essentially that they've gone with. And I actually really like it. I've been through this question bank um, probably three times now, and it's over 1400 questions. It's been recently updated with a new interface and a new design, so it's actually a lot, uh, a lot nicer now than it was previously. So they've definitely updated. They also update questions regularly, so I'll always, you know, I'll log on and see every once in a while if there's any new options in terms of questions. And so this has a really good uh, array of questions, both psychiatry and neurology questions. And I think they're very much on par with concepts that are tested on Prate as well as the board exam. So people have used this question bank not only to do well on Prate, but also to do well on the board exams. So a good resource. And in general, question banks are nice because anytime you have some downtime, say while you're working or while you're on a call shift, you can pop open one of these question banks and do a few questions. Likewise, if you're waiting in an airport for a plane, you're, you know, just kind of waiting in line at Starbucks, whatever the case is, you could always pop these things open, hit a couple quick questions and continue to reinforce it. I like that method because again, the more questions you do, the more questions you see, you start to kind of gain an understanding of how they ask the questions, what way, what different ways they could ask the same question that might trip you up, as well as you know, getting an understanding of what the core concepts are that are being tested in each case. So that's the first question bank that I like and the first resource that I like. The second one I'm going to talk about here is the Psychiatry Test Preparation Review Manual. This is by uh, Spiegel and Kenny. This is sort of a core thing. Unfortunately, in psychiatry, unlike it was for, say, USMLE exams, there's no agreed upon resource that everybody thinks is a good one. So I feel like when I was going through medical school, the one resource everyone agreed on was the UWorld question banks. Out of all the things that were available to study from, everybody said, you know, you have to study from the UWorld question banks, and for good reason. Those questions were, you know, the most similar, I would say, 
to what you were actually going to see on those USMLE exams. So it was an essential thing to have the UWorld question banks. Now with the psychiatry prate exam or psychiatry board exam, this I would say is the closest thing to an agreed upon resource that everybody thinks you should study from. It is a book. It's available on Amazon for about $85. It's really fantastic, actually, in terms of it's all just questions. And not only do they have regular questions, like your regular multiple choice questions, they all have the they also have the vignette questions with the video, which is another component of the board exam itself. Now, most people I've talked to that have graduated residency that have been successful in taking the psychiatry board exam have said that this is the best Q bank and that this provides the best uh, questions. And again, this is one I would go through a few times just to really get uh, familiar with it. So you can see that there's six tests. Each of those tests consists of 150 questions. It, you can select it by topic if you prefer to study by topic. Normally I'll do that at the beginning and then I'll randomize later. There's the vignettes. There's 20 case study vignettes as well as eight video case studies. So there is a combination of these things and the board exam actually has alternating blocks of questions. So one block is regular typical multiple choice questions. The second block will be vignette questions and video vignettes. So that's a different, that's a little bit different than what you've seen on maybe some of the other examinations you've taken in the past. So this is another good one. I have the third edition. There is a fourth edition currently available. Um, from my understanding, very little changes from edition to edition. And this is what it would look like in terms of the uh, online resources through Expert Consult. So this is another good resource and a good source of questions. I really think it does help you pre prepare not only for PREP but also for the board exam. So a very, very good resource. The last resource I want to talk about that I think is important for residents in particular is the Psychiatry Genius, also known as PREP Genius. Um, and this is a little different in that, yes, they have multiple choice questions, but essentially what they have done is they've gone back through all the old Prite exams and they've kind of extracted the most relevant topics and questions and really answered them in detail. So one of the problems with the Prite exam in general is when you get your score report and you get that information, they don't tell you why a question was right or wrong. They don't, they just tell you what the answer was. So you have to go back and kind of research those things. And essentially you guys are lucky because somebody actually went out and did that all for you. So I would recommend the Resident Genius at the very least, which is $98 for the year, which is very, very reasonable price, I think. And uh, again, a good resource for any resident years one through four. All right, guys, so we made it to the end of a long video on the Prite exam, some of the resources that I think are important and some of the things that I think can help you. So the last part is kind of the study strategy. What can you, what can you do? Again, if you really want to do well, you do want to make a pass on one of those textbooks as well as the Kaufman's Clinical Neurology for Psychiatrist textbook during your neurology rotation. So while you're learning neurology, read through Kaufman's. While you're doing your psych rotations, read through one of the books, Kaplan and Sadox and or the Mass General textbook, whichever one you choose. So if you go that route, you're gonna get a good foundational basis of knowledge, which I think is actually the key. You wanna have a deep understanding of psychiatry. You don't want just a superficial understanding or enough to pass the exam. You really wanna understand your craft and know what you're doing when you're taking care of patients, and this is one strategy to help you do that. So the payoff in the long run is huge for reading and going through these textbooks. The second thing I mentioned was kind of picking question banks and other resources that are really helpful. So for question banks, again, whichever one you choose, whether it be Board Vitals, whether it be, whether it be the um, Spiegel and Kenny book that I talked about, Psychiatry Review book, either of those are pretty good options and both of those combined does a lot of the work for you along with the Prite and, Neurolo and Neurology Genius from Psychiatry Genius website. If you cover all of those things, I think you will have hit all of the important topics in Prite. Now, the reason I say, I said before at the beginning of this whole thing that there's no one encompassing resource just because I did well in these exams doesn't necessarily mean you will do well. 
um, just because I use these resources and I'm recommending them doesn't necessarily mean these are the only resources to use. These are just the ones that I found in my personal experience to be the most helpful. So if you do the Board Vitals question bank, if you do the if you do the um, Kenny and Spiegel's book, and you go through the Pray Genius as well as the uh, Neurology Genius sections, you really will have covered, I think, a majority of the questions. The one thing I didn't mention here that you could also do as a strategy is the old Prite exams are usually either available through your residency, like our residency has them, they purchase them, or you can purchase them yourself. I think they're about $120 per year. But again, you're not gonna get anything other than the questions and the answers. You're not gonna get any explanation. You're not gonna find any deeper understanding from that. However, the closest thing you're going to get to the actual Pride exam is going to be those questions from actual Pride exams. So it makes sense that investing in those or using them if they are available at your residency would be a good idea.